Hey guys, I'm Kyle and welcome back to another video. This week we are taking a short break from the electric truck project to show some love to my current daily driver tow rig. Um, so I got this truck not too long ago. Its primary purpose is going to be to tow my Jeep around if I'm going rock crawling or to tow uh, this thing if it needs to go to the shop before it can drive down the road on its own. So this is primarily a tow rig currently using it as a daily driver and I wanted to get some good upgrades on it uh, just so it's it's nicer to drive every day. Got uh, these upgraded headlights installed a while ago. I did rock sliders yesterday. Uh, well, step, sidestep rock sliders. So they're primarily a step. They sit down lower than rock sliders would, um, but they are strong 316 steel welded to the frame. So if this needed to go off-road to recover my Jeep, um, that's pretty much the only time it would be on a trail is if my Jeep broke down and I was using this truck to go down the trail and recover it. Um, if I do need to use those as rock sliders, they they'll, should be plenty strong. And in today's video, we're going to make a custom winch bumper for the front. So I wanted to make this video just to kind of show you guys um, if you're interested in saving money, truck bumpers are incredibly expensive and they're pretty cheap if you um, have the skill and the time and the equipment to make one yourself. <laughs> so uh, I'll walk you through my design process and the first step is going to be taking this stock bumper off and looking at our mounting points to the frame where these, uh, where these tow hooks are um, on the stock bumper is where we're going to want to mount our winch bumper to and we'll get after it. All right, so we have the stock bumper off and I'll kind of walk you through the first part of when you look at something like this and you're gonna decide how you want your new bumper to mount. Obviously one option is uh, four bolts on each side where those recovery points mount. Um, I'm surprised at how small of hardware they used for um, something that would tow a 10,000 pound truck out of a ditch or something but uh that's what they used there's eight of them so i guess there's there's uh good strength there but then when i was investigating further this whole uh this whole piece that kind of held the the six bolts from the stock bumper um that mounts to the frame with two large bolts right here that are actually sleeved through the frame so um, really strong, really um, bigger size bolts right into the frame. And for my winch plate, for my winch to sit right here, I was already going to have to have a plate going this way that would have that would have ran right into the center. And then I would have had to cut a plate, get all of those holes drilled in the right spot. And um, I think it'll be easier to just not reuse this piece and I'll go straight to the frame with my quarter inch plate and, uh, and mount it to the frame with four bolts. All right, so the next step is going to be measuring for the winch plate. This is one of the strongest parts of the bumper. It's a quarter inch steel plate that the winch mounts to and it mounts to the frame. And basically I'm gonna build uh, a box out of quarter inch plate and that's going to be all of the the really strong parts of the bumper is going to be where the winch mounts and then where the tow hooks mount. Um, so that'll all be tied into a box of quarter inch plate to the frame. And then as we build out from there, the rest of the bumper can be thinner steel because it doesn't have to hold the winch or, or the tow hooks. Um, so there's a couple things that I know that I want here. I don't want the whole top of the winch exposed. I'm gonna have a cover plate that basically covers uh, two thirds of it and just lets me get in here to access the clutch release. Um, so I know that I want that top plate to sit at the bottom of my grill. Um, and then the other thing is this hood style is a little bit inconvenient. It Actually, it doesn't, I thought it came out more than that. So you can see the whole grill lifts with the hood when you pick the hood up. 
Um, and so I need to make sure that my winch doesn't block the hood from opening. So I know what height I want and I know how far in I can go and that will tell me I can measure my width, frame rail to frame rail, 34 and a half, and then how far out my winch plate needs to be and I should be able to start building this box to the frame. All right, so don't mind the balancing act here, but uh, I, uh, I got my winch plate made, cut to size, that's all done. And so now what I'm able to do is, is get measurements for this side plate. It's gonna come off the frame there. It's gonna capture the whole edge of this winch plate. It's going to give us a spot to mount our front plate and our top plate of the bumper. So this, it's, it's all gonna tie in, that's what I was saying, winch box. It's all gonna tie into one really strong box here. So this is where CAD design comes in handy. Of course, I'm talking about uh, cardboard aided design. Um, so this lets me kind of make a template and see, okay, that's lining up. This, is, this edge is lining up where I am thinking I can draw that line, see, do I like that? Do I wanna leave it? Um, so this is a, a really good spot where cardboard helps you kind of lay out your, uh, your design before you cut it out of steel. All right, so I have everything ready to tack in. Um, and this is a pretty important step. Um, once you get your first pieces cut that are gonna mount to the frame, you wanna tack this all together with the bolts through the frame so that your holes are lined up perfectly. You'd rather have it be two degrees off here or an eighth of an inch off here um, than square it all up, say on a table, weld it together and then you bring it over to your truck and your holes are just a quarter inch off or two degrees off or something like that. So always make your first tack welds with everything uh, bolted to the frame. And now I'll take you through kind of the second part of the de design process where you have the structural thing all figured out and you're just trying to figure out what you want your bumper to look like, if you want hoops or bars or headlight grill protection. Um, and for me, with this being a big heavy uh, road trip type truck, um, I do have concerns about not only hitting like an anim a big animal like a deer, and I wouldn't want that uh, that to ruin my my road trip and and destroy the radiator or the front of the truck. So I would like to have grill protection. Um, so I was thinking about doing like a whole ranch hand style bumper like this, um, but I don't have a tubing bender or a tubing notcher, and that just seemed like a lot of complex work for the tools that I have. And uh, that's why I decided to go with just kind of a grill guard like this. Um, so I'll take you through kind of how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna have square tubing that lands in this corner of this plate. It'll be welded to this real strong plate coming up here and it'll come up and then bend in. And then I'm going to cap it um, so that hopefully the grill will just barely, barely clear it when it comes up. Uh, so I'll get one of them cut out and I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, so it is a new day, and I was able to make lots of progress busting out that box yesterday. 
all due to having a plasma cutter, right? <laughs> I'm just so happy to not be cutting steel plate with an angle grinder anymore. Um, so I was able to plasma cut out my, uh, my winch fairly mount there. And then I was able to draw out this top plate with, uh, what I thought was a good looking design. Let's you get into the, to the winch handle. And, um, also the hood release latch is right in there. So that's uh, good access to, to let you get in there. And, um, now is the tricky part. And this is not the functional part of the bumper, but the aesthetic part of the bumper. So for this area right here, I have a lot going on. So at first you can see I'm going to have a piece that has to come up. The top, the top plate of the bumper has to come up to get from this level where the bottom of the grill is to the bottom of the headlight. And then it's going to go flat from there. Um, but I'm trying to make as few angles as possible. And that being said, um, I just want to have one plate on the front going in from here until I get out to the edge of my bumper, which is going to be here. Um, so those are the first three pieces I'm trying to make. Um, but I'm going to try to use cardboard to lay it all out because I just have a lot of, of odd angles going up a little bit flat while going in at a steady angle. And I'm going to see if I can get that made out of cardboard uh, so I don't waste any steel cutting pieces incorrectly. All right, so this is working pretty well. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut these first three pieces out um, because I kind of like it looks like it should all be lining up okay. Um, a little bit of error in the cardboard that I'm hoping to correct when I make the steel. But that's the idea of the shape that I'm looking for. And then there's going to be a couple more lower pieces. Um, but the more cardboard taped seams, the more margin for error in, uh, in the measurements. So I'm going to cut those pieces, get them tack welded in, and uh, see how it looks. moving right along continuing to make good progress on this bumper and uh, you can see now I got all these side plates tacked in uh, the only piece I still need to make is a, a cap for a triangle for this back corner um, and now we're working on the bottom edge so there is my center plate and tack welding that center plate in got me the uh, the angles that I needed when, uh, when there's so many weird, um, multiple angles going on, really the only way to do it is one piece at a time so that you can use a piece of cardboard and measure what angles you need. Uh, so I'm going to make two of those pieces and get them tack welded in. All right. So this is the part of the project where you feel like you're almost done and there's actually a lot of work left. So I have all of the metal pieces put in now. I added this second bar here to kind of help fill up that space, just make it look nicer. I capped the bottom of those pieces of tube, and then I actually added a gusset in here. If, uh, if my winch line is pulling sideways, I didn't like the, the distance that this quarter inch plate uh, spanned with no support. I felt like it could get bent sideways uh, so I added those real strong gussets in there and now I have probably about a third of the welding done and about two-thirds left to go and then I have to grind all of the welds and uh, clean it all up get it ready for paint so I'll get all that done 
and give you some time-lapse footage. was going to be maybe a two-day project turned into a seven-day project but it is all done it's all installed and I could not be happier so I'll show you around so it is all finished all installed for the coating for the paint I did a Seymour truck bed coating Seymour is a little bit better brand than Rust-Oleum or your kind of generic spray paint brands um, they make a really nice product and I think it's a lot more durable than most spray paint would be. Um, the texture also helps hide kind of imperfections in the, in the edges as opposed to a shiny paint, which would show that more. So I did the grill and the bumper in that uh, truck bed coating. Really happy with it. Uh, got the winch all spooled up, tested out my, uh, my recovery mounts there tightening the cable on the winch or the um yeah synthetic cable on the winch and for lights these are just 20 dollars amazon lights they're supposed to be amber amber helps visibility in the snow more than just white leds um but these ones are pretty cheap they look a little bit yellow to me so i might try to find a different brand that would fit those those same brackets that i have on the bumper Overall, I, I'm just super happy with how it turned out. I really like the look of having more clearance to the tire. The center is still about as low as the original bumper was, um, but obviously a lot stronger, uh, better protection if it was hitting anything. And uh, really like to have that grill protection if I was to hit an animal, that would uh, save my radiator for sure. And I trimmed the fender liner to um, fit the new bumper clearance and I wired the, uh, I wired my amber lights to the original fog light switch. So that is really convenient. Uh, didn't have to do any extra wiring harnesses or anything like that. That's it for this video guys. Hope you enjoyed watching me make that bumper and make sure to subscribe, like, comment, all the good YouTube friendly stuff, and I'll catch you in the next video.